Hey guys, something a bit more niche today for you. This is the Creely Blade Mako. This is a custom knife. This is a knife that you have to order and wait for and you know choose your options and all that sort of stuff. Um, this is, I think, his most uh, frequently made design, so you'll probably have some decent odds of getting one. But these are excellent little fixed blade knives that transcend use from being outdoorsy to being pure everyday carry cutting down boxes. Now, these two are fairly different. As much as they look the same, um, there is a fair point of difference and that is the steel. So, this one is in CPM Rex 121 and this knife can be or could be attained through a Kickstarter, which I think is due to drop fairly soon, I would think, uh, if it hasn't already. Um, I bought mine outright first up. Um, this um, is a pretty rare thing, having Rex 121 in a batch of knives. So yeah, a bit of an event for all the steel nerds out there. Um, this one is in CPM Crewwear, which is uh, you know a bit more of a 3V-ish or 4V-ish sort of steel, which is kind of associated with being more rough and tumble and rugged and that sort of thing. You see that they're both more or less the same, except the uh, Crewwear one is actually a little bit thicker. So it's a bit more robust, the stock is a bit more thick, whereas this one is quite a thin little I would say almost scalpel-like um, blade, especially with that Rex 121 edge, yikes. So I'm gonna talk about kind of both of these knives, just have a loose discussion about what I use them for and um, you know my journey with them and all that sort of stuff. So I guess we'll start from the beginning. So I had no knowledge of this man or his knives until um, one of my viewers, Tactical Center or someone, one of you guys got me onto, hey, there's this guy making a knife and like, the most tricked out steel you can get at the moment and he's doing a batch on Kickstarter and I was like I got in touch with him I was like hey man knife please knife please and he was like yeah, yeah, yeah you can like he let me buy one of his like protos so um this is a Mako in 68 or 69 Rockwell uh, Rex 121 the Kickstarter ones are coming in 67 so hey guess who's got a bit more Rockwell this guy but yeah it's a um uh, limited run batch and just spoke to me instantly as a steel nerd first rather than a knife nerd. So yes, I must admit my main fascination with this was as a, uh, a showpiece for the steel. Um, everything was done right though to show off a steel. So as you can see, this is like a saber ground blade, but the stock is rather thin, especially down towards that tip. And the saber grind drops pretty rapidly towards a very, very fine edge, uh, which I have put on this at 16 degrees. It was a bit of an unholy process, I must admit, but it wasn't different from what you would normally do. You just have to do it for a lot longer. So I did that and I got my steel test video out. You all remember that, you know, no, no steel has ever cut any more than this knife has um, on any of my steel tests. Um, I think it did about 950 cuts through rope. Uh, comparatively, this one, Crew Wear and Excellent Steel, did I think mid 300s, so, which is very, very good. So there's just something otherworldly almost about the cutting performance of the Rex 121 here. Uh, not a stainless steel. It is um, very high in random other carbides though. So. Uh, the makeup of it, and this isn't going to be a steel video, but the makeup of it makes it very unique indeed. I guess I'll stop there. Very good for edge retention, holding a jagged edge or a rough edge, like a, a toothy edge for a very, very long time. So yeah, uh, this one is the one I got and was what I was after, but then he said, hey, do you want to buy a Crua one as well? And I'm like, well, I haven't done Crua either. So again, steel nerd Pete, I am, you know, I'm taken, smitten with the idea of these two new steels that I've got. And, um, Sure enough, I said, yeah, man, <laughs> send them both this way. So I, um, it, it, between, I think it ended up being about $700 for both of these, Australian dollars, um, uh, about that anyway. It, it's an investment, but this is definitely my passion. So, I mean, this whole field, the steels and the and knives for a start, but then steel and steel adventure, adventures in steel definitely uh, talks to me. So yeah, what... I was really happy with when the knives came were that they were two properly excellent EDC fixed blade knives. I like these more than the LT Wright Patriot. I like these more than the JX6. Uh, I like these more than all the other very good and you know some more average fixed uh, mini flex blades I've had on this ch uh, channel so far. The JX6 is one that I would recommend for everyone to get as something you can buy 
very readily, but these are just worth waiting for. If you are an EDC fixed blade guy, the Mako pattern just talks to your hand. Um, these fit any hand size. Like my wife can hold these and says that they're comfortable. I hold these and I think they're excellent. You've got this really generous forward groove which actually sits one and a half or two fingers in. Your second finger is a bit higher. You can back away a bit if you want, but this is great for me. And it just becomes, a, the swell of it just sits right here in this main grip part of my, my hand. And I get a full four finger grip on it. Um, these fingers are longer, so they stretch further around and you get a solid fistful of knife. As I said, 950 cuts, comfortable still. Not, I was exhausted, but mainly just from the action of the cutting rather than my hand being sore. Whereas other knives I'll do 150 cuts with and just wish I was dead. So um, the design of these definitely backed up the hype of that the steel was sort of promising. So these Mako knives, um, depending on what sort of steel you want, and Gary is a steel guy, so he will you know, offer you a bunch of steels, or you just look on his site and see which ones he's already made, whatever. Um, these are um, available, you know, and they're gonna be about 300 bucks or something like that each. It's, it is what it is, it's a handmade item, and it's probably gonna be made out of some bizarro steel that he had to spend, you know, three grand on to get a big salvo of it in. So uh, I think the value is 100% there. You're supporting a local cottage industry, a craftsman um, who definitely knows what he's doing and is adventurous and far more adventurous than other craftsmen. I have no doubt that Gary must get some steels get them treated, that treatment fucks up, probably has to disregard, there would be a massive process to perfecting like A, the knife design and B, the run in, in a certain steel. So I think the value is definitely there. So in terms of use, so in terms of use, I carry this one to get a feel of the steel and also quite nicely as an EDC fixed blade. You can see my other rev reviews on this and I still carry this from time to time. Just you know, pop it in my pocket if I'm just staying at home most of the day. I don't need to see a fixed blade out in public. Australia is just not quite ready for that despite our movies suggesting that we are, but um, Australia is not quite ready for that unfortunately. But um, I do EDC this and cut a whole lot of stuff with it and to be honest, the Rex 121 holds up. It holds up, it's not the glassy substance that we all sort of thought it was gonna be. And this is a higher Rockwell treatment. This holds up to cardboard, to woodworking, to all the stuff that I've showed you in that previous video. Uh, it does really, really well. Um, the, the blade shape and the grind, is perfect. So you've got some flat, you've got some belly to do pretty much any cut you want. You've got a nice little tip there. The swedge lets you pierce and penetrate. And best of all, the handle just keeps it snug in hand. Comparing the two, the Kruger one is a little bit bulkier. He's got some uh, maple burl there on the handle, which does, you know, it's a bit, it's a, certainly a warmer feeling than the polished over G10. Um, the maple has a slight porousness to it. It is still stabilized as in resin impregnated wood, but it's a bit more sort of warm and natural feeling. Um, slight, slightly larger curves, mainly just an added squareness here, makes this a little more comfortable in my hand than the Rex, as this is just a little bit skinnier and I have a larger size hand. If you have a medium hand, the Rex is great. Um, if you wanted to beef this up, you could just probably ask for some liners and that would be fine. Um, so yeah, the Kruger one I actually take when I do my uh, large knife reviews and I use this if I fail at feather sticking to make feather sticks and things because it'll make the shit out of a feather stick. It'll make a great feather stick. Um, Cause you know, you generally use about that much of a knife when you make a feather stick. It's, if you do it like I do it, I mean, I'm not an expert, but I'll use this as my little backup woods blade. The crew wear is a tough enough steel. You don't have to worry about it rolling or really anything happening to it. Very 3V-ish. 3V slash 4V is what they say a crew wear is sort of capable of doing. That, that level of performance. So yeah, really, really excellent little knife. A bit stouter as well, um, which is you know funny because you think, oh, the wreck should be stouter because apparently it's more fragile, but hey, it's not, so who cares? And uh, this is definitely um, you know, a fairly rugged feeling as well. Uh, you can take the scales off of this one if you wanted to. This one is pinned in with these tubes, so you can't get those out, but uh, not that I particularly want to anyway. Um, this has not rusted at all and I've used it and I've kind of forgotten that I've used it and left it out. Um, the only thing that's happening is 
where I'm holding it most is graying. So the steel is graying and it's losing its shine. So just a nice healthy patina. So it is definitely not a stainless steel, but I get a, I get the feeling that some of those other elements in it might be not completely compatible with rust either. So I'm actually feeling not too badly about saying good EDC steel, good EDC steel, horrible to sharpen, but good EDC steel when you're not doing that for the, you know those few hours on that one day a year that you're gonna have to do it. Great wood steel in this one, great outdoor steel, uh, easier to sharpen, um, will hold its edge for less long, but if you're after like a little woodworking or bushcrafting knife and you're a small knife guy, then this Mako has a fair bit to offer as well. I know I don't, generally don't do reviews like these because I like you to be able to see something that I'm showing and going and, and go and get it. Like it's why I sort of, I love my, um, my Greystone custom knife as well, but you know, you can't get one. So I'm I try not to sort of lead you on too much about it. These you probably can, you can probably hit Gary up. I don't know what his workload's like, and I'm, I'm real sorry if you, if you're snowed under already Gary, and you get a few more um, people wanting knives yesterday. But um, yeah, I just felt like I should point it out because I got something really special in terms of something that I, I really sort of represented a milestone for me in my channel uh, with the steel and also something that's handmade and has actually done something that very few other knives bar the JX6 has done. And that's becoming an EDC fixed blade that I actually really enjoy and often choose to carry. Mainly, mainly because of this amazing leather sheath. It is just exactly what you would want an internally carried knife to be in. It is, you know what, I don't say this often, this sheath is perfect. It, there is nothing wrong with the sheath. It's thick leather. It has a good welt all around it. It is stitched together, you know, with enough um, tension to be able to adequately hold the Rex knife, which is a bit thinner. So you still can't shake it out. And then snugly hold the uh, crew wear knife. This does feel like it's less likely to fall out, but that doesn't feel like it's gonna fall out at all in a minute. So it's done really well for, I guess, any Mako, I guess is what I'm getting at. And then this pocket clip here, it's like a deep carry interior pocket clip with lots of, lots of ledge, slides down. And because you're not taking this in and out of your pocket all day, it does need to be a bit tighter. So it is a tighter pocket clip. So it's like something you'd put on after you put your belt on in the morning, you'd put this in. And then the knife just goes in and out of it, taco style as you use it during the day. Just finds home, poke it in. Yeah, you probably need to check with your eyes the first few dozen times until you get the muscle memory up, end up cutting your pants open. But um, yeah, about as good as you can do a fixed blade sheath. Um, I feel terrible, I can't remember who makes these. Um, he has not put his own maker's mark on it, it's just Gary's um, Creeley Blades is on there, but this is a local maker, and this did add some price to the knife. If you want one of these, it's like an extra 70 bucks, but I mean, this is proper premium leather work, so I don't know. I wouldn't be hesitant to pay that at all. I mean, this is gonna be, a, this video, it, probably as soon as I said I paid 700 bucks for both of these, you're probably not still here if you're, if you're against that, but um, yeah. Pay that bit extra and get a proper sheath for it. Um, these shipped with these um, containers, which are absolutely fine. But then, of course, that would limit it to being EDC carried, um, you know, unless you want to carry that around all day. You'd end up just with this in a pack or something and using it as, as you wanted to. Or just, you know, if you're collecting them and you're never going to use them, then whatever. But if you plan on using them, um, try and hit them up for one of these sheaths because they're just perfect. Anyway. Creely Blades, I've just been meaning to give this a shout out for a while now because they are just excellent. Um, they slice, they cut, they are strong, they are comfortable, they are varied in steel. That's why, why does Pete love Spyderco so much? Yeah, they're ugly, but they use all the different steels, they're adventurous. Um, he's like a one-man Spyderco, like he's always on the lookout for that new stuff to, new stuff to try. And you gotta appreciate that, it's cool. Not many people are doing it. Lots of custom makers, and this is totally fine as well. They find their one or two steels, survive. Hey, we found 3V and 20CV. We're sticking with them because we know them. Um, shit, even Benchmade. Nah, we like S30V and we like 154CM and sometimes 20CV and we're done. And you know, most people stick with what they know. Oh, custom maker, R RWL34, CPM154 and A2, thanks. You know, it's... Um, 
it's it's a bit different. I mean, Bark River do it a bit, as if you are after a bit more variety, you find some M4, you'll find some LMAX, some varied stuff, but you know, you can get these in L LC200 and Vanax. You know, just hit, check out his website, see what he's got going. Uh, I can definitely vouch for the quality and how these actually are in hand if you're looking at the Makos. Uh, I haven't handled any of his other knives. Um, I just don't have the money to. <laughs> if I did, I would. But um, yeah, these are just excellent. Anyway, guys, hope I haven't bored you too much. Um, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed seeing these, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.